Let me talk to you about uh, the $50,000 PenFed personal loan. So all of y'all who are interested in this loan, I want you to pay attention, okay? Here are seven hacks to ace the application without fail. I'm speaking about the personal loan application at PenFed, how to ace the application without fail. Once you go anywhere, you're gonna love today's conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Story Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ought to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or foot cotton and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to talk to you about the $50,000 PenFed personal loan, okay? Here are a few hacks that you need to implement today if you want to ace the loan application without fail. So when we talk about the $50,000 PenFed loan, this is the maximum. Fifty thousand is the maximum. So you can be approved for one thousand, twenty-five thousand, ten grand, any anything between a two fifty or three fifty and fifty thousand. Okay. The first hack is you want to seek pre-approval. You want to systematically seek pre-approval so that your ass does not get denied with a hard pull. See, the cool thing about pre-approval is that you are getting a soft pull and you can protect your your credit score. And the cool thing that the other cool thing is that PenFed does allow a soft pull. Okay, so you have many benefits when we talk about a pre-approved loan. Okay, you basically you are able to uh, to get the loan with that. First of all, you can see how much you could qualify for, not only in terms of the amounts, but also the APR and the conditions in terms of maturity of the loan. So they kind of give and PenFed will give you different scenarios, so you have a clear idea of what you could qualify for. Could you qualify for ten thousand payable in three years, twenty-five thousand payable in two years? 5,000 payable in five years and whatnot, you, you get a constellation of offers, okay? And so pre-approved loans work in a very, very easy way. The thing is you go to PenFed and you click on check the rate and you enter your, you enter information and all that kind of stuff. And basically based on the information that you have entered and also the, the archived information about you, PenFed will give you a series of offers. So it works very fantastically, okay? So there are a lot of benefits of pre-approved loans. So this is less work for you. No hits to your credit score, right? You have the opportunity to build credit. You also have the potential for competitive terms, right? This is kind of cool because you have, you have options, right? You have opportunities to consolidate debt. And uh, there, could be a, there could be a great opportunity where based on the PenFed personal loan that you're looking for, you can get a great rate, okay? So pre-approved offers from PenFed or any other lender do not affect your credit score. I wanna emphasize that because we have been, it's kind of funny, we've been hearing a lot of things in the forums, on Reddit, and uh, on our YouTube uh, comment section, people talk about a soft pull would actually hit your credit score. No, it does not. It might show up, it might show up on your credit score, however, it does not reduce your credit score. The 10 points ding, the five to 10 point ding that people talk about does not come from uh, pre-approval. So I wanna say it. The second hack that you need to pay attention to is your PenFed debts. Yeah, I'm talking to you about your PenFed debts. So you wanna limit the number of PenFed credit products you currently have. You wanna limit that to five or less, okay? This is important. And Mike, this is for you. I mean, you've been talking about, well, I have PenFed credit cards and mortgage as well. This is kind of cool. I'm not saying don't get that, but you want to make sure that overall your PenFed credit products are limited to five because PenFed looks at you on an aggregate risk basis. They think about, hey, how much is our exposure to this individual, to this household? If something were to happen, how much are we going, are we, do we stand to lose? So if you have credit cards, you have mortgages, you have loans, you have lines of credit, you have all kinds of products with PenFed, that's kind of fine as long as you can handle it, right? However, you want to limit those products to five, okay? And so, the, the, so this begs the question, how do I do that? Well, you want to have a, a strategy in place to reduce your debt. This should be the, this should be a long-term goal. We're not speaking here about anything short-term though. You want to limit your, your PenFed debt so that when PenFed looks at your, your file, they see a, 
a, a, um, a lower risk profile on a consolidated basis okay so Mike Letitia this is also for you I want I want you to really so your credit cards so you I want you to sit down and list all the credit products you have with PenFed you want to limit that you want to limit that if your goal is to get the fifty thousand dollars PenFed personal loan approved you need to limit your debts with them so develop a budget to track your expenses don't take on more debts okay and also pay your bills in full and on time if you can but the, the cool thing is on time is, is more important because you, if you can pay only the minimum due okay you can do it one or two months but overall and in the long run you want to get into a habit of paying your bills in full and on time and check your bills carefully okay and it's also important to pay off your high interest debts first because they actually have the bigger uh, impact on your uh, interest payments. You want to reduce the number of credit cards you have, not only with PenFed, but also with uh, other credit card issuers. We know that PenFed has uh, four credit cards, four main credit cards, and uh, we tell our, our viewers to actually have only two PenFed credit cards maximum, only two. Okay, and if there is a way to actually uh, consolidate your debts, do that. So what's the takeaway here? The takeaway, and this is the big decision time, big decision time boss i'm talking to you right now i want you to pay attention to your pen fed debt your current pen fed debt what is their exposure to you in other words how much you owe currently this will affect your ability to be approved for a fifty thousand dollars pen fed personal loan The third thing I want you to do, this, and this is the third hack. The third hack is your FICO score. So we want to get into a, a we want to get into a movement where we improve our credit scores systematically. That's the keyword here, systematically. What's the question? How does the FICO score affect your uh, your chances? Of course, it has a big impact. I mean, not just for your PenFed your PenFed loan. It, it, your FICO score is just quintessential. It is the foundation. It is the fulcrum of any credit card or loan application. We know that. This is like credit 101, right? So when you think about your FICO score, there are a lot of ways to actually improve your FICO scores. And don't you fall for those uh, people who razzle, dazzle you with, uh, oh, you can improve your FICO score by 100 points in, in uh, 30 days. This is good. This might be good for a, a YouTube clickbait sort of a video. But in reality, it doesn't happen. I'm, I'm just telling you straight. You can't lose weight. You can't lose 20 pounds in uh, 20 days. You can't. No, no, no. We got to get into a position where we realize that things take time. Hey, 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 hey. Things take time. Okay. Don't you, uh, you know, I don't want your impatient ass to be around and say, you know, I want things now and I want things uh, now and I want things big now. It takes time. Okay, build your FICO score. It takes time. You're not going to get a 100 points bump in 30 days. I don't care who is selling you snake oil. I don't really care. I mean, you know, we got to get to a position where we have to be truthful to people. The truth is hard to hear, but the truth will heal you. Okay, so I'm telling you today that building your FICO score takes time. Pay your credit card balances strategically. Ask for higher limits. You can become an authorized user on somebody else's card. Okay, the bottom line is you got to get into the game, get into movement, have some movements in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. That's what builds your credit over time. You can expect a good bump o over 90 days. That's the reasonable uh, interval. Okay, and pay your bills on time. Your bills, you know, bill payment accounts for 35% of your FICO score. So this is really important. You want to dispute any credit report errors if you find them. Deal with collections accounts if you have some. I mean, everybody has uh, has gone through problems, been there, done that. So if that happens to you, you want to deal with collections accounts strategically, okay? And uh, the thing is that, you know, get credit for rent and utility payments if you can. We have covered on this show, there are a lot of players out there that actually help you build credit by reporting your rent payments, okay? And you want to add your credit mix also to sort of bump up your FICO score. So this is a, a reasonable effective and proven strategy to increase your FICO score. The, the fourth thing I want you to think about is actually uh, your PenFed banking. You know, I'm not just asking you to, to, to start your banking relationship with a $5 savings account and $5 checking accounts. No, 
you can expect you cannot expect to have a skinny ass checking account and build your and build your relationship with them okay no start where you are i'm not saying five dollars five dollars doesn't count i mean five dollars count five dollars is a big 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 first step but if you're trying to get the fifty thousand dollars per pen fed person alone you ain't go, you ain't going anywhere with five dollars you need to beef up you need to solidify you need to buttress your pen fed banking relationship i'm talking to you don't you walk around and just tell me that you didn't hear this I, i'm telling you you need to beef up you need to get serious here get off your ass and beef up your relationship with penfit okay and we got to get into a position where we're telling penfit listen we are coming to the table to the to the negotiating table and we i'm parking that much cash that much cash with you and in return i want you to look at me favorably in my loan application in other words i have a, i have a decent fico score okay and basically i i have a when i'm talking about having a strong pen fed banking relationship i'm talking about having a checking account having a savings account okay having certificates with them yeah certificates are important certificates are really really important if you have enough cash open an ira account also an ira an individual retirement account see the whole thing is to go to the negotiating table when you apply for a pen fed personal loan you want to go to that table in a strong position okay and that's why you want to cultivate a good report with pen fed okay you want to if you are lucky if you want to uh, set up direct deposit so that it comes into your pay comes into pen and a pen fed account that's kind of cool and you can do this on a partial level or a full full level in other words you can say i'm just uh directing 100 percent of my net pay into pen fed accounts or i'm just directing maybe 50 percent or 25 percent but there has to be movement in and out in and out cash inflows cash outflows cash inflows cash outflows cash inflows cash outflows that's how you play the game boss that's how you play the game so money 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 what are we talking about we're talking about boosting our chances of having the fifty thousand dollars pen fed personal loan okay and by and by actually parking some of our cash with the institution we are boosting our chances of being looked at favorably of being approved for the $50,000 personal loan. The fifth, hack, the fifth hack I want to talk to you about is your income. Cuz, hey, 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 come over here, come over here. Hey, listen, here's the bottom line. I'm not saying you need to make a lot of money to get the PenFed loan. However, you need to have you need to be in a position where you actually increase your income over time and this hack is important the hack is what the hack means the hack says that if you want to apply for a pen fed loan make sure that you have enough income to cover the loan payments in terms of your dti in other words if you were to add another debt payment to your dti will that keep the dti around 35 percent or less this is an important element because PenFed is not going to approve you, or at least will actually ask for more documentation before approving you. If your DTI is in, say, is around 75%. So the question to you is, where is your DTI at right now? Talk to me. Do you even know where your DTI is at? You got to know. You got to know this, you know? So, hey, I'm talking to you and I say, listen, I want you to sit down, sit your ass down, and really, you want to put all your, your debts in one column. And your income sources in an, in a, another into another column and you want to divide your debt payments to your income to see your dti you want to be around 30 35 percent 30 to 35 percent is a great spot to be it's a good neighborhood to be in anything above that you are in trouble territory now i'm not saying having a higher dti is bad it's just that temporarily and from a credit standpoint it is risky okay so there are several ways you can actually increase your income which you should actually whether you want to improve your dti or not you need to be in a position where you you make more money year after year after year okay so you can create a passive income source you can actually uh, look at uh, modifying your tax withholdings maybe they're taking too much money out of your paycheck so you look at your uh, your your um uh, your w4 so you have your withholdings okay you can ask for a raise or a promotion 
at work, you can actually start a side business. Yeah, what's up with that? This is this works. I mean, you know, start a side a side business, make more money. You can use your hobbies to your advantage. Do you have a hobby that you can monetize? That's something we need to talk about. Okay, you you want to try Uber? You want to try uh, Postmates? You want to try? You can drive for a ride share company. You can also even use your, your car f- to make extra money with Amazon Flex or um, how do you call it? The Walmart Go Local. I mean, there are so much. There's so many opportunities nowadays in terms of when you have the intersection of uh, electronic commerce, e-commerce, and regular commerce. That intersection creates a bunch of of new opportunities. Seize some of those. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another uh, section of the Awesome Studio Kiwi Show. I'm still talking to you about the PenFed, the $50,000 PenFed personal loan. And uh, the the topic on the table today is what are the hacks that will help you get that loan fast and easy, right? We ain't playing time. We ain't playing. We ain't play, we ain't losing time here. We ain't wasting time. We just want to get the loan, get in and get out. So you want to think about your CUR. Now I, I understand. What's that? The CUR isn't there for credit cards. Yeah, I, hold on, hold on, hold your horses. I'm gonna break it down for you. Your CUR indeed is part of your credit card utilization. This is your credit utilization. When we talk about CUR, the credit utilization ratio, we are speaking about revolving lines of credits, right? We are speaking about credit cards. However, your CUR has an important element, has an important impact on your FICO score, which has an important impact on your ability to be approved for the $50,000 PenFed loan, right? Because your CUR accounts for 30% of your FICO score. So it, it is important. So this is where we see an intersection between credit cards and loans. Did you get that? There is an inter- intersection. Why? Because all of them are credit products. All of them are debts. Any outstanding balance on your credit card is debt, as is your a loan that you uh, you uh, con- you contract from uh, PenFed or another lender. Okay. So you want to pay down your balance early. If you want to lower your credit utilization ratio, which is uh, something you need to get into because your CUR should be around the same neighborhood percentage wise as your uh, DTI, your debt to income ratio. We are speaking about 30 to 35 percent. That's really this is really this is where the um, where the sweet spot is. OK, you want to pay down your balance early. You want to decrease your spending. Those are things we have talked about before, but they, they are quintessential. They are fundamental. OK, you want to pay off your credit card balances with a personal loan, if possible, because CUR is a credit card and revolving line of credit topic. However, it, it has an impact on your installment loan, your installment loan uh, approval prospects. Right. But think also about increasing your credit limits. Yeah. If you can increase your credit limits simultaneously, what you're doing is you are lowering your CUR. You can open a new credit card. You, you never close unused credit cards unless they are charging you crazily high APRs or they're charging you fees and whatnot. OK, so credit card, credit card, credit card. The fulcrum of your credit card strategy should be to lower your CUR systematically. Don't you don't let anybody fool you with uh, something else. No, the strategy here is to lower your CUR by paying off whatever balance you have on a card. And you want to maintain this low CUR on a long in a long term. The last thing I want to talk to you today about is your PenFed membership, okay? And uh, so your PenFed your PenFed personal loan. If you want to improve your chances of being approved right away, your membership plays an important role. So the thing is, let's say you just uh, got approved, okay? You are very happy, PenFed. You don't need any military affiliation to be approved. Everybody, nearly everybody can be approved, okay? And they used to uh, require some military affiliation, but now they have they are open to everybody. Something that Navy Fed hasn't done yet, okay? So you want to wait for at least six months after joining before you apply for a personal loan. So if they approved your, your, your application for membership, just wait a little bit. During that time, there are things you can do. There are a lot of things you can do. So basically, I've spoken to you about uh, beefing up your NPR with them. But there are a lot of uh, there are other let me see it. There are other avenues of involvement with uh, PenFed. What I'm trying to say here is that 
trying to see if you can actually uh, if there are uh, see the goal is for you to be known within PinFed whether you are working on uh, you are calling customer service you're going to the branch you're trying to have a personal banker you want to establish a relationship that goes beyond money in other words they have to know you they have to know you like basically they have to know basically uh maybe your family what kind of a, what kind of a loans you're asking for because the more they know you the better your chances of being approved let's say you want to uh, you want to apply for a fifty thousand dollar personal loan and your personal banker already knows that you have a home improvement project that your home has some problems and that you will need the money for home improvement chances are you might be uh, approved faster because they know what you're going to use the money for they know you personally or they, at least they know you a little a little bit about your private life they know that you have a good a decent FICO score that you're making good money so the whole thing i'm trying to tell you here is that when we talk about membership once you wait for six months you need to start developing a relationship at a more personal level i'm not asking you to tell them everything about your business no you don't have to uh, divulge unnecessary private matters to them but you want to you want to give them a, a clue into why you need the money okay and how you make money how you generate income it's important so a few pro tips here a few pro tips first of all wait for six months after you join number two during that time you want to beef up your uh your uh, banking with penfed number three you want a penfed banker to know you okay at least to know your plans for credit to understand those plans so that at the right time when you apply for the penfed personal loan that rep can actually carry your interest down to the credit committee and make sure that you are approved Thank you so much for your attention i really appreciate it i will see you next time but i want to quickly recap here so in today's conversation i gave you seven hacks that will help you get approved faster for the fifty thousand dollars pen fed personal loan so you want to have a you want to seek pre-approval you want to look at your pen fed debt your FICO score your pen fed banking relationship your income your cur and your membership membership status thank you so much for your attention i will speak to you another time but until then remember stay Marvelous.